Hello one, hello all, it's the Gothias Ghost of them all, Caspa in the flesh, and it's time for a review of Brittany Howard, What Now? Brittany Howard is a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and a former member of the now disbanded Alabama Shakes, which is unfortunate because I did love their last album that they put out, which I thought was a massive improvement from the debut, and I also feel like this is a massive improvement from the debut. The solo debut. Her first album, while I did enjoy it, I felt like she kind of painted herself into a corner. It wasn't exactly giving us the most epic endings we could hope for, especially with how talented she is and how adventurous she has proven to be. But on this album, that has improved greatly. The songs here definitely have more strength when it comes to assembling them. And you're still getting that heavy, sonic intensity that you were getting on the last album but this time around there's a lot more color here there's a lot more variety here and a lot more stronger endings with definitely more texture and thinking about it now and i normally don't go off cover art but with the debut being black and white which we didn't really have that much color to it sonically and with this cover being as colorful as it is you're definitely getting more color here in opposed to the previous effort hmm but yeah this album is more expressive it's more psychedelic definitely more adventurous like on the opener earth sign i love how chunky and fat the production is here and the vocals are tripped the fuck out and with britney's vocals being as powerful as they are the effects just make it sound so monstrous. Which I would say is also the case for the title track. Except the chords are super squishy. Squishy, squishy, squishy! The vocals are so pained and commanding with so much conviction. Blame it on me. Blame it on me, girl. And I love how it harmonizes with the instrumentation. There's so much expression. There's a lot of funk with a lot of expression. And I also want to say how Britney is definitely more daring on here. Surprisingly, going into an electronic house direction, like on the song, Prove It To You. Prove it to you. With these glowing chords, and I love the swelling bass, sharp melodies, tight polyrhythms, which transitions beautifully into the psychedelic jazzy Samson. But this time it's definitely more somber, and I feel with how much of a banger that Prove It To You is, it definitely complements it. It makes it seem more cathartic. And the sax passage at the end is very beautiful, and I feel also conceptually complements its predecessor. And while we're on the subject here, even the mellower cuts on here are great. Like on the song, I Don't, with beautiful, soulful, grouped falsettos. And the way they echo in the background, it gives reminiscent, it gives summary. It's very blissful. It's like I'm, I'm just like floating through the mountains, through the flowery field, like on the cover here. And there's also tracks on here that are conceptually moving and powerful, especially given the time we're in today. Whether it's tracks that deal in toxicity and relationships, like on the track Red Flags, how she is just blinded by her infatuation for this person, and really just seeing past the warning signs. She is just looking at this thing with the rosy lenses as the relationship gets progressively worse while still wanting more. And I will say too, I'm not exactly sure if this was intentional, but as the album continues, you definitely start to hear her be more defiant in standing up for herself and saying enough is enough, which we will get into later. And also I wanna mention how Britney's soaring, wailing vocals are definitely something to behold. And Another Day, which is an absolutely bold, stunning track that speaks passionately on love equality, queer community, having this idea of no powers separating people from being who they want to be with, where you could be with whatever gender you desire without any oppression, while asking people on the outside, will you help? Will you help in these situations so that way this could be a possibility? And the answer is, hell yeah. Which segues beautifully into Prove It To You, as I alluded to earlier. Which a lot of these tracks do. A lot of these tracks do segue into each other. So there is cohesion to this album, definitely. And it definitely ends off strong as well. With the super heavy and funky power to undo. With these powerful falsettos 
eccentric vocals, eccentric backing vocals that have a very eccentric, strained power to them, kind of like D'Angelo in a way. And the guitar arpeggios come off very Prince. But damn, the production is just so thick. With a very defiant shot to the last partner she was with, who I'm assuming is the person she was speaking on Red Flags, how they have the power to dismantle the peace and the recovery from the trauma of that last relationship that they caused, but Britney saying, nope, 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 not happening. You have the power to undo this, but I'm not letting that happen. And the closer is very dreamy, very hypnotic. I feel the winding quality of the grooves in a way kind of remind me of Radiohead in Rainbows and the fact that Britney mentions Rainbows on this track Maybe a coincidence, maybe a slight nod, I don't know, but it's tastefully done and creatively done well. With these blaring, squealing saxes going absolutely nuts, really coalescing well with Britney's quivering, ghostly vocals on here. And I love how each piece of instrumentation just flows through the track. As Britney speaks on mental health and saying how she stoically keeps it inside, but, but unapologetically just letting it out on here, no holds barred. Overall, I think Britney killed it. This is a massive improvement from the debut and definitely unlocked the potential that I knew she had on her debut. And sure, there are a few weak cuts on here, but it's mostly due to the lack of development and how they just kind of, you know, end before they begin, which is a kind of an issue I had with the debut. But still, the uneventful tracks like To Be Still and patience. Mostly the production on here is top notch. Britney's writing, vocals are super expressive, super passionate, and Britney took risks on here that I think paid off very well and were a success. And sure, Britney does wear her influences on her sleeve, but I do think she does it in a very creative way where you could tell a Britney Howard track when you hear one and brings interesting, compelling twists to them. And also adding different varieties to Psychedelic Soul. Sure, I wouldn't say this album is overall the most original thing I ever heard, but still a great album, still adding a lot to Psychedelic Soul, and I'm loving it. I'm feeling the blackest four out of five hearts on this album. But if you've given this a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And that's it. Caspa, Gothic Ghost, Brittany Howard. What now? Till we meet again.